So it's pretty safe to say the military know fully well what the infection is, since they are doing an eye and skin check to make sure people aren't infected. I cannot wait for them to somehow get overwhelmed by dumb, slow-moving zombies. Wait, okay, they're fast, but still, they have guns. Why is this guy giving this couple a full interrogation when he barely gave anyone else the time of day, even having some smart-ass remarks about not having a gun? So military procedure for a pandemic is to vet people for signs of infection, and if they find a bite victim, are supposed to punch them and drive off, leaving behind tons of other civilians? What? Seems like a hammy plot device to have the mother find her kid again like Rick Grimes with Carl in The Walking Dead. Seems like those airstrikes outside concluded rather quickly once they got to safety. Well, I was fully expecting him to turn while she was cuddling and cradling her husband, but apparently he has had time to turn within the minute she walked out of the room. This scene feels so awkward, yet hilarious. She busts right through this door while Granny is straight chillin' and she barely reacts or says anything. You're lucky you didn't walk into the room of a prepubescent teen getting one last spanking session in. Patrick! 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 Why are you screaming Patrick's name, fearing he may be a zombie now? Didn't you grab a knife earlier, possibly expecting the worst? It seems that even this early in the outbreak, people know what to expect a little bit, but will still probably be completely freaking stupid. So the zombie Patrick gives up on his wife and instantly finds the quiet grandma in her room and bites her. Why would you slam the door behind you knowing noise attracts them in the first place? This zombie hears the sound of the slammed door, busts through the glass, and starts chasing his wife again, leaving the grandma to run away with a bite to the neck. Do these types of zombies not finish the job, they just get a bite in and run? Well, we know headshots are the way to go now. Now this scene of her breathing into his ear, nearly ordering him to help her get to the stadium, goes on for the longest 30 seconds of my life. The soldier agrees to help her and doesn't even consider that she may have been bitten while she was being attacked on the fence. This woman speaking purely Korean drags away the deaf guy for some reason. What the fuck is going on? Please, I beg you, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Would you like me to drive? Total Stranger walks up, says he needs help. You give enough space in the window for him to reach in at any time, and you let yourself be convinced that not only can he hitch a ride with you, but he can drive the car? Man, you got what you deserve. And just like that, we transition away from the Night of the Living Dead reference to Lance. So we are dealing with the Walking Dead-like zombie outbreak, where everyone is infected and will turn into a zombie no matter what the cause of death, unless the brain is destroyed, with the bites just causing a disease that kills the host. I'll go ahead and remove a sin because I love the dynamic and danger this can bring up, but we'll see how the show executes this as it goes on. The zombies in the show sure do give up pretty fast once a door gets in their way. So they can have some semblance of how fences and doors work and can figure the way around pretty easily. Interesting. Can't wait to see this dynamic fade in the coming episodes. These two guys don't hear the zombie girl yelling and grunting and blah, 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 as she runs towards them and only react when she is within feet of them, ultimately costing one of them their lives. Gotta love people that are oblivious to sound in a pandemic event. Never trust a captured person when they say they gotta pee. The military guards just say, aw man, after getting pushed over and lets the civilians have free reign past the checkpoint. We're into episode two and there's tons of awkward silence. Hey, I'm not gonna rape you. At least he is straightforward. We start to spectate a couple doing some pallet looping with a zombie before eventually the woman is attacked, with the man not realizing until moments later. The zombie just growled at him and gives him time to escape so he could get one more bite in. The woman turns in the span of 20 seconds. 20 seconds from the initial bite. The husband from earlier had a bite that lasted probably a day and he didn't turn. She doesn't even die first. She's just like, you know, this guy is kinkier than my husband. Better switch teams. It feels like these are just a mesh of ideas of how people would be in martial law. But honestly, lazily executed. People would just throw rocks and grocery carts of fire at any car coming by and they would have this coordinated with a flammable cart just in case a car came down the small town road, no zombies around? Come on. No one gonna address the rear end is visibly still on fire? You're just gonna leave it like that? If Zombieland taught me anything, and it wasn't quite a lot, 
it's to buckle up. This zombie makes no noise after climbing on top of the car from the back just to slightly jump scare the driver and the audience. Good thing they wound up on a long road with no cars or debris to run into while they confront this clinger. So while this zombie has the control and dexterity to grab a hold of the driver while he is slamming the gas pedal, it doesn't dawn on him at all or even from the start to just slam the brakes and let gravity take care of the situation? No? Just gonna have this scene of him almost biting you? Good job, bro. While she doesn't speak English, let's stop the truck to discuss and translate directions after being attacked by people and zombies and being stalked by a big black truck. Nothing bad could happen, especially with an already busted out window and no telling what debris is is in the undercarriage of the car. You know, I'm really getting sick of these title cards to divide up the episodes into mini chapters. It is ruining the pacing for me and feels kind of pretentious. We've got food, water, medicine, I'll suck your dick. Wow, his girlfriend was quick to resort to dick sucking while he just offered food and water. Be gone, suck! After being stalked, attacked, and having a stowaway, let's just casually drink and sing like nothing bad can happen now that we're on the open road. Oh. <laughs> Why would you just now put your seatbelts on? Why would you ram into a high-rise truck with a minivan? You're gonna be doing more damage to your vehicle than you are to his. I want to say that was shocking, but damn, that was hilarious. While I might be going to hell for my sense of humor, I gotta say, fasten your fucking seatbelt and keep your eyes on the road. I don't care if somebody's right next to you slamming into you. These zombies turn after everyone in both cars conveniently wake up from being unconscious, even though zombies immediately come back from the dead in other scenes. After these people purposefully tried to ram you off the road and almost got you killed in a head-on collision with a concrete wall, I would not be doing them any favors by keeping the door open. These zombies can't break through this glass door, even though they have been shown to be able to do that pretty recently. Episode 3, and we're already splitting up to look for clues? A double decision of dumb moments. Curly Joe starts lightly banging on the drum, so in retaliation, let's just ram him into the wall as loudly as possible. Great reactive reasoning. Ain't nothing like a random ass kid to make people question their rational decision making in a post-apocalypse. You would think four to five weeks of this zombie stuff would have you more numb to seeing dead bodies. The deaf guy runs away after seeing this for some brain dead reason, even though he demanded to stay in the school and help the mystery kid. She continues to yell and say hello over and over and over again in a deserted school. Do you want zombies? Because that's how you get zombies. What kind of trap is that made by kids? Trip a victim, blow them up apparently, and lock the door bomb. And we're interrupted again by a title card. Great. So a group of teens and preteens have set this school up like a Five Nights at Freddy's Fortress? Where'd they learn to build all this? Fortnite? No! What? I would have iced that kid so fast if he had opened fire on my friend. And don't give me that, but they is only children argument. This must have been what the Logan Paul versus KSI match looked like. How many rounds does this pistol have? Now, I get that the people of this universe don't know what zombies are and that they have to be shot in the brain for them to be killed, but at no point did they ever attempt to shoot the head. Episode 4 and we get this guy quietly roaming about after supposedly being trapped? These kids like to kill people and watch the zombies chase adults and laugh about it. I blame years of Call of Duty zombies for this. Ban Call of Duty. Again, this zombie turns immediately and this guy just hesitates for far too long to realize this. Okay, what is the strength scale on these damn zombies? They can break through fences like a damn star quarterback after falling two stories, but can't break gas station glass doors? Yep, let's just stand in the middle of a four-way intersection. Nothing possibly could go wrong. The fact that an automatic door is still working and not broken four to five weeks into the outbreak is astounding. This grocery store is not only untouched, but it's perfectly organized and straight. No grocery store I have ever been to has had their stock looking this nice. Let's just casually shop around and pretend life is normal. Not like a zombie could just waltz right on it. Oh. Yep, let's just peek around the corner. He'll never see me with my head completely exposed. 
You know, looking back at all of this, he could have had a sweet setup if he would have disabled the doors and then blockaded them. There is so much food and water and drinks there that he could have lasted for years. But nah, story needs tension. Zombies have been shown to know how to climb, but this one just can't quite put it together. Oh, thank God it's over. Uh Oh, it's just another title card. Yeah, he figured it out, good job. Only one zombie ends up chasing this guy throughout the whole city, despite all the noise they are both making throughout this whole chase. Oh, now he decides to barricade a door? Should have done that in the grocery store, man. Why would you yell at him before swinging your axe? You gotta do it stealthfully, man. Get that critical hit. And you got it stuck. So now we are stuck watching this half hour long chase even longer. The zombie ignores the guy casually getting in his car to continue his pursuit. This is some Jurassic Park level shit right here. Is this guy's sister gonna start banging some pots and pans to draw its attention away? Nobody shoots for the head, but will gladly waste two shots and then proceed to bash their head in? Because of course the faceless character that just saved you with no backstory gets bit easily and doesn't turn immediately. Episode five, when we are already exposing ourselves to outside zombies to have some romance. <laughs> Cheap ass jump scare. These kids, they, 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 this fucking generation, they don't want everything handed to them and I'm fucking sick of it. Okay, boomer. Why would you open the blinds that wide? Why not just barely lift one to peek so they can't see you back? Why do you keep it open long enough for her to see you clearly and have this awkward moment of you guys staring at each other and then she just slams against the window? It dawns on them that anyone that dies comes back. Now if it only would dawn on them that they aren't immortal and just shoot the freaking head. Oh, someone says to go for the head. And he says, nah, sis, knees. Give me them knees, shoot the knees. It's like they intentionally are riding their characters to avoid any kind of semblance that humans need their brains, live or dead. This is just agonizing to watch. They execute a plan to distract and kill them, but barely tap them, and when they sneak attack them, and then fail trying, only to be chased back in. I would yawn, but even I'm too bored for that. Oh, there's the yawn. <sighs> The redneck method wants to throw the non-English speaking Korean girl out to the zombies as bait so they can escape. And then everyone discovers that he himself was scratched. I bet that his former allies are gonna turn on him. <laughs> Oh, there we go. This guy is still conscious and looks fairly all right outside of some blood, despite over a dozen bludgeons to the head. It only took them over a month to figure out that destroying the brain works. What a bunch of smart people. So they show up, help them take out the zombies, and have a slow-mo gear up scene and are cool with each other now? I mean, there wasn't any plot development for them to get to know each other, but now they're gonna be a fucking SEAL Team 6. Episode 6, and of course the soldiers they're trying to find safety with are gonna be molesters. The second group somehow sneaks into this armed base and acts like they have all known each other and their skill sets perfectly. This feels like the Walking Dead group after season three, but without any of the character building or built relationships. When the only thing this entire group has done together is only kill two zombies and one meth head, so it all just feels forced and unnatural when they pull off their SEAL Team 6 stunt. They know exactly where the weapon cache is and only had to take out one guard along the way to get to it. He turns off the power and zombies appear in this underground dance? What the hell is going on? Every character during this episode pretty much has no dialogue throughout all of this, and it just further makes the fact that these chains of events don't make any sense. So he is shot repeatedly by blind, continued gunfire into a ventilation shaft. He dies and comes back. Not a single bullet hitting him in the head. But now we can have this really cool scene of a zombie friend chasing down the girl in a cramped space. She stabbed him in the throat. He keels over and becomes a zombie in less than 10 seconds. What the fuck is the turning time in this franchise? You had the guy that was bit and he spent a whole day with a bite and an infection. Somebody dies and they immediately come back and sometimes they don't i don't understand i thought you were supposed to die first but plot convenience dictates he becomes a zombie before he dies you don't have to be dead to become a zombie episode seven and everyone is back together except for the boyfriend so let's do what the show does best and not talk or explain anything the two soldiers from the beginning of the series seem to be all right with the criminal wearing their dead friend's uniform and don't say a damn thing nearly 10 minutes of people staring at each other 
awesome. She wakes up to find Spears is missing and decides to look for him alone because nothing ever bad happens to the leading female of a horror story. The two soldiers are walking down this abnormally long corridor to, I don't know, torture this guy for whatever he did in the past and for killing Spears. Then they tell Rose he is a con man and had lied about his identity as a soldier and who he is as a person. But because the liar says they don't care about her daughter, she caps them both? Why? And why would two soldiers pay no mind to a woman who is packing heat right behind them? Plus three cents for this travesty of a scene. This homeless guy, who hasn't said a word throughout the series and only helped to open and shut doors, randomly whistles for the first time once they all start to head out and his dog randomly shows up and he just leaves the show? All right, what was the point of him? Last freaking episode and there are only 20 minutes apiece now. Seems like they were rushing the end of this season, possibly series, since these episodes originally were 40 to 50 minutes apiece and now they're barely getting over 20 minutes apiece. This group of dozens of survivors are dumping half their clips into each zombie they see and still not hitting the head and getting a kill. There are surprisingly little amounts of zombies here at the start. This zombie somehow sneaks past this circle of survivors to attack her without a sound. What? She pukes and she instantly becomes a zombie. None of the gun-toting people around her decide to open fire on her while she transforms. Not one person? No? Okay. People start dropping like flies because of this one woman turning. The amount of people not shooting for the head is so goddamn annoying. Time to see zombies dive bombing background characters ad nauseum. This guy can survive a car wreck without any injuries, but will start to have a limp near the final arc because of an old injury from the past, just to add tension. So he friendly fires the old man, but the old man doesn't instantly turn into a zombie? This zombie was just waiting in the corner for someone to come by? Weren't there like half a dozen people right in his line of vision to chase after? Apparently, a bomb dropped right near him, but nothing visibly happens on screen. He just kind of half-ass flails to the ground with some cheap Adobe After Effects smoke to take over the screen. Zombies in this universe act like a kid in a candy store who can't decide what kind of dessert they want. We'll run up to a person, see that another zombie is biting into them, and just move on. Don't they, I don't know, want to eat flesh? Why do they give up so easily? There is a lack of actual practical effects when it comes to zombies biting people. We just have to assume they are biting them by having the zombie bury their head in a victim's neck, hair, or body. After bumping into this guy, the stranger points a gun at him and hesitates and conveniently forgets that there are zombies around. I wonder if a zombie is going to attack him. Of course. He was being chased by a horde, but an off-screen explosion seems to have wiped them all out. Convenient. Do main characters ever run out of ammo? The fake soldier goes up against the real soldier as a zombie, having this confrontation for a few seconds, and the horde doesn't catch up to them until he has time to run away. <laughs> This is the cheapest way to kill a character that has the most development in this series. I realize death can be swift and striking in a story like this, but it just felt lazy how he was killed off. The Korean gal kills three zombies with one spray of her infinite ammo Uzi, but a group of dozens of people can't kill one zombie? She shot him in the chest. What's going on here? Better sit here and stare at the fence, not like a horde of people couldn't possibly knock it down. They finally make it to the stadium and it is completely untouched. Not even a scrap of litter. Despite citywide bombing, hordes of zombies, and apparent rescue attempts. And the season, or possibly series, ends with her daughter running up to her. Happy ending? Yes, because this sin count is finally over. Wow. 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 Shoot him in the head. Shoot him in the face of the chest, then shoot him in the waist of the neck. Can I tell you about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I am the word and the giver of his laws. Disobedience to me is disobedience to him. Do it now, or your punishment shall be a thousand times. I just felt like running. Shoot. 
ask me a question. I dare you. Please.